Hey folks, welcome back to the EDM studio. Today I'm going to be talking about the ES1 synth. And what's kind of cool about this is that when I was going back looking through the docs, I realized that I've actually done videos on all of the concepts involved in this synth. And this goes to something I said the other day, which is that as these synths get more and more complex, they're still focusing on just a few core ideas. And once you get those ideas, the complexity is really just wiring them together in different ways. So let's, uh, let's just jump right into it and start talking about how this synth works. So like all the synths that we've looked at, it starts with a waveform generator section. And then after that, the signal goes into a filter section, which is here. And then the filter is actually controlled by an envelope, and we've also got an envelope on the amplifier section, which is just an amplitude envelope. And then we've also got this oscillator section and a modulation envelope section. So just going through these sections really, we've got the waveform generator, which is what I talked about in my signals video. We've got the filter section, which is we've got a video on filters, uh, and then the envelopes, including the amplifier envelope. I have a video on envelopes. The low frequency oscillator I talked about in the modulation video, and then the mod envelope is really just a. Um, it's almost like a, a combination of a modulator and an envelope. So um, both those videos are relevant there. So let's talk about each of those sections in more depth. Um, the oscillator section uh, is based on the idea that you have these two oscillators and they are linked in some ways, but they really create a broad uh, pairing of voices. So the, the top one can be used to generate either a triangle wave, a sawtooth wave, or a square wave with pulse width modulation which I talked about in the video that I just did on the ESE. Over here, you've got the pipe length from the organ, so this is just an octave selector, essentially. Uh, down here, you've got the sub-oscillator, and the difference between the sub-oscillator and the primary is that the sub-oscillator is going to essentially complement your primary oscillator sound, and typically that will be an octave or two below. So the sub-oscillator can output either a white noise signal, it can take an external signal from the side chain, it can output a octave below square wave, a pulse width modulated one, a two octave below square wave, or these kind of random patterns. Oh, well, they're actually not ra random, but they are a pairing of various voices and phases of the other ones, or you can just turn it completely off. So lots of different things you can do there. Finally, you've got a selector that controls the mix between the primary and the secondary. So all that is straightforward, it's straight out of the signals video, and all of these waveforms should be familiar, except for maybe the white noise one. Uh, a white noise signal is really just a, a really broad frequency range with no harmonics. So it'll create kind of the sound of like wind going through trees or something like that. Next we've got the filter section, and within the filter, a lot of these terms should be really familiar. You've got the cutoff uh, frequency, which is the point at which the filter begins to have an impact on your signal. You've got the resonance, which controls the uh, frequency content near the cutoff frequency, so you can, in some cases, boost that frequency. Um, drive is something that I haven't really talked about, but what that is is you're going to amplify your signal into the filter and then that will cause it to distort and that will essentially give you a, um, some high frequency noise in your signal like an overdriven guitar amp and uh, yeah that, that's just based on um, the filter parameters so drive is, you can think of that as a, uh, a distortion almost and then around the filter you've got these different selectors so uh, in the filters video, I talked about the slope of the filter. You've got a 24 dB slope, uh, a 24 dB fat slope. So a fat 
fatness is again that's boosting low frequencies so that you can compensate for some of the high frequency content you might get around the cutoff if you have a high resonance. So these are the same slope, but the fat one has a bit more low frequency content. Uh, and then you've got an 18 dB and a 12 dB slope as well. So uh, that is the filter section. And the filter is actually tied to this envelope section. Uh, we talked about ADSR before. Uh, this is attack, decay, sustain, and release. And this is going to control essentially like the behavior of the clamping down. Now you notice here it actually says ADSR via velocity. And this selector here allows you to set the range that you want the envelope to impact your cutoff frequency based on the velocity information. So if you tap the note um, lightly, you will have a less aggressive envelope than you will if you tap it you know, really hard. And that will, um, and this top selector determines the, what happens when you tap it hard. This bottom one determines what happens when you tap it softly. Then lastly, you've also got this amplifier section, which also uses the envelope, except rather than being an envelope in the filter, it is an envelope in the amplitude of your signal. So this selector works exactly the same way as the one on the filter, except it is purely in terms of amplitude of the signal. Now, there's also this selector here, and th what this does is it determines what components of the ADSR envelope it's going to use. So if you got it on ADSR, then it's obviously going to use all of them. If you have A gate R, what that means is you're going to use the attack, but then uh, gate is basically a binary signal, meaning that as soon as you hit the note, it's just going to stay constant. And then as soon as you release the note, it's going to go to zero. So this is saying use the attack, hold it, and then use the release. And the gate R1 is the same thing except no attack, just release. So that's all of the envelopes section. Uh, next we've got the modulation section. And this one is this one is actually pretty complex to understand. So first you've got the low frequency oscillator. And you can think of this as just something that oscillates at a rate that's uh, a low frequency in comparison to the frequencies coming out of your primary and secondary oscillators. So you've got the rate selector for that here. And you can actually sync that to your project tempo if you like, or you can just set an arbitrary rate. And then over here you've got the waveform selector for it. So just like these, you've got you know triangle wave, sawtooth um, declining, sawtooth ascending, square, and you've got this random hold, and analog random, and then using an external source. So all that should be pretty familiar. This part is where things get kind of crazy. So you can actually control, I already kind of hid the text here, but it says intensity via, uh, I think, wheel. So that means you can control it you can actually control the intensity of the modulation with your wheel on the keyboard. Um, and then you can select what you want to modulate. So you can modulate the pitch, the pulse width of your signal from the, uh, the primary oscillator, um, the mix, which would be the mix between your primary and secondary, cutoff of the filter, resonance of the filter, and then finally volume. So uh, that is the modulator section. But there's also this mod envelope section. And now this is where things, this is like starting to get really made up, but you can actually modulate the intensity of the modulator, which then modulates your, say, uh, filter or pitch. So you, if you leave it in the middle, that means that your modulator is always going to affect your signal in the same way but you can also have your modulator become more intense um, as the note, uh, let's see, as you move it to the attack side, that means that it will grow in intensity, and as you move it to the decay side, that means it will uh, decay in intensity. And you can also set the, 
the parameter that this mod envelope is going to affect. So it could also be like pitch, pulse width, mix, cutoff, resonance, volume, and then uh, this would be the uh, filter modulation and the low frequency amplitude. So that would be the amplitude of this low frequency modulator. <laughs> so a lot going on there, um, but that's uh, that's again the same principles of modulation except this is taking it to just yet another step because this is the envelope of the modulator which is then modulating something else. So that's pretty much it for the primary uh, stuff on the ES1. There is also uh, a couple other interesting sections or not even sections but just miscellaneous stuff going on here. So you got glide which is the if you want to pitch bend between two notes, the glide determines how quickly it will shift between those pitches. I'll do a demo of that real quick. You got a tune selector, which is just, um, it's like tuning a guitar. You can move up the entire pitch of the whole synth that way. Analog is actually going back to the way that synths used to work for digital electronics. In that case, you'd actually get some fluctuation in the pitch uh, because those sorts of circuits work uh, in, an, in a less precise way than a digital circuit. So this is kind of like a random um, pitch bend. Uh, then you've got the range of your pitch bender. Oh, and another thing I should mention is the ES1, one of the coolest things about the ES1 is it's really built from the beginning to allow these pitch bends. So it's kind of just thinking about like, you know, So you got like these really classic sounds that you can get out of the ES1, and that's because um, it's got that pitch bend. Uh, you got the output level, which is pretty straightforward. Voices is the number, it's kind of like a chorus effect almost. It's how many different um, voices out of phase you're going to create with this oscillator. So with one voice, you get a really kind of plain signal. And then with 10 voices, it's as though you have a chorus of people playing. Um, a chorus effect is actually basically the same thing, except a chorus effect is implemented after, whereas the voices effect is um, at the beginning. It's kind of like duplicating all these oscillators up here. All right, so that's all that. Um, and uh, I guess maybe I'll just give a quick demo of some of these things um, before we sign off. So got the octaves, you got the waveforms, so you should be able to hear the difference between, say, a square wave and a sawtooth uh, triangle. Actually, they all sound pretty similar, but that's probably because of the, uh, the filter. Um, you've also got your low, uh, your sub oscillator, really balancing this out, so you can hear the difference between those here. Uh, filter probably make a huge effect, except for the cutoff, right? Depth, resonance, again, and hear those pitches right by the cutoff. Um, ADSR, definitely, so if I put this, the attack way up, you'll get that swell. So it kind of swells into a note, and if I put a long release, it will decay slowly. Almost like a pluck. Um, what else can we mess around with? Ah, the glide. This is. Okay, I forget the glide. Oh, so. So you get this like long pitch bend. And I should also mention one thing you can do here with the voices is if you put it on legato, you'll actually get it as though it's one long note. as long as you connect the notes that you play. So I can get a kind of cool effect there. Uh, maybe I'll just demo real quick the difference between one voice and a lot of voices. It sounds like much fuller, right? So a lot of stuff to think about, but uh, you, know, you can really get some neat uh, sounds out of this, particularly if you're into that analog, kind of like old school synth sound. So um, that is the ES1.